In today's video, I'm going to discuss the UDS Indianapolis 2019. We're going to discuss what all the new tech cards were, what were the big events after this weekend, and realistically, what is the best deck after the UDS. So getting right into this, you guys, this event was absolutely wild. So, okay, the UDS consisted of a lot of different decks. Well, not really different decks. I mean, we have like five to six decks that really were at the top, but we have like basically everything from last format adapted after Rising Rampage, after the new structure deck, which the structure deck did literally nothing unfortunately and also we have some rogue aka doug's altar guys and we even have burning abyss in there i'm not going to talk about the burning abyss list as much because we didn't really see much of it and we don't really know what the list looks like but getting right into this there were a lot of new tech cards one of the new tech cards and probably the biggest tech of the weekend was gizmic orochi so gizmic orochi is very like honestly it blew me away seeing all of the combo players playing that card not all the combo players but a lot of them were basically the the appeal of gizmic orochi is it's a level eight special summon at any point it's just like snow where it keeps coming back every turn and then if you use it during your opponent's end phase you can then on your turn banish three extra deck cards face down and remove something from the field so realistically it's actually like an incredible card it just keeps coming back now you may make the argument oh banishing eight and then banishing three isn't that realistic it, you don't want to banish all your pieces well realistically in a combo deck once you get all your pieces out you don't necessarily need like anything else so in one of the profiles that featured gizmic orochi the player stated that Oh, Orochi can be used at any point after you combo, and it's just irrelevant. All you really want to see after turn one is Levianir. And realistically, that makes sense. It's like Desires, but it's just more practical in a combo deck, especially in a deck like Sekka Thunder, where you're playing Sekka's Light. So Gizmic Orochi apparently just doesn't have a cost, it seems. There are one ofs that you wouldn't want to banish, but like realistically, the amount of immediate value you get out of it, especially for a combo deck where, I mean, you really need immediate value more than long-term value. Another card that I think maybe went under the radar a bit, it was mentioned in one of the articles Konami posted about the UDS, one of the tech articles, but I think another big tech that came out of this weekend that not many people expected is the Trishula Fusion. So Tracy Love, the Icy Imprisonment, is like amazing. So the reason why it's so good is because now you have an extra deck method of using your guard dragons to get access to your thunder engine. By orienting your deck completely around dragons, you can still play your thunder dragons and not have to rely on Teryusha to draw into them. I think this is actually huge. And I think the last part that goes under the radar about this card is that it banishes a monster from the extra deck. That is incredible. So many people undervalue this card, in my opinion, or at least I haven't seen as much discussion on it, but I think this card should be discussed. Banishing the one of Kagari, if your opponent plays one mermaid, banishing that, banishing Phoenix, banishing whatever, right? If they have a one of extra deck card, then you can banish it and it's absolutely amazing. So those were the two big techs of this weekend. Now, lastly, I wanted to go over some of the top decks. So obviously we have Danger Thunder, I mean, the deck is still really good. So a lot of players changed up the style a bit. So now you're playing three Brotar to basically counteract something like Ogre, for example. Drawing Brotar enables you to play three specific hand traps better. So I saw one list at least playing three Brotar. Jesse was playing the Orcus Thunder Dragon list. To me, it looks a bit inconsistent, but I mean, I'm not Jesse Cotton, so who am I to talk? But uh, I, I personally have to see the list before I'm more convinced about it. We obviously have Orcus as another most represented deck. Orcus is still amazing. You're not necessarily ending on the same power level as before, but now realistically, it is probably the like best overall deck of the format, if you want to put it like that. So what I mean is like, you have Salomon Great from last format being the most represented deck. Orcus has kind of taken that slot. I, I There was some Salomon Great that topped, and I'm interested in seeing what the lists look like for Salomon Great. Personally, I'm still not a believer in Salomon Great anymore. I know I topped with the deck, but like realistically, it, it just took a huge hit on the ban list. So 
I have to personally see the Salomon Great list before I can comment on anything. We have Doug Z going in with Altergeist. Oh man, so, so when you look at his list, it actually makes sense. So obviously you have one multifigure. Apparently one multifigure doesn't kill the deck, so that's good. If you resolve multifigure, you still win, it seems. Doug also played one Sangin, he played hand traps around eight. So like honestly, his list like just seems pretty clean. He played Lost Wind and Crackdown, which probably helped immensely. Uh, he played three Solemn Strike, which honestly also probably worked out really well. He did not play Judgment, which I find interesting. He probably just felt like it wasn't good going second. He's going to make a list, uh, like a 20-minute video on Altergeist or something, so you guys will be able to find out his deck choices. His side deck was really solid. Inspector Border shuts down Danger Thunder, so that worked out well, except when they normal Crusadia and go into Magius. Um... But yeah, no, his side, his he came well prepared, and obviously Doug is highly experienced with Alter guys. So realistically, I'm not surprised he made top four. With every other deck getting weaker, and while Alter guys did get weaker, it wasn't substantial enough to where the deck was like it w hit worse than the other decks. And combined with the fact that Doug already knows what he's doing, there was so much combo. He has a good combo matchup. Doug just went in, and I couldn't be happier for him. But Regardless, I think Altergeist probably won't do much after this event. The meta isn't defined at all, so with that in mind, do I think Altergeist is going to top again? I mean, unless it's Doug Z, no, but uh, Doug did a great job. He really knew what he was doing with the decks, so it makes sense he top forward, but I don't see the deck like having any prevalence in the format. We have the Orcus PK Warrior Guard Dragon mesh of a deck with hand traps. The biggest thing to take away from this was he made a huge medical in playing three Joel and Lockbird for combo decks. I honestly respect that. If he kept drawing Droll and Lockbird, even though he was playing 55, if he drew Droll and Lockbird going second, he would basically be guaranteed another turn against combo. So honestly, I think that was a great meta call on his part. And I think that in the future, Droll may be seen in the side decks. I don't know. I think for this event, he made a great meta call and that really took him to the top cut and then to the finals. But do I think his deck specifically is like the craziest? Maybe. If you guys have seen his list, the Orcus PK Warrior Guard Dragon Mesh from YCS Knoxville, then you will understand what his deck looks like. He just played it a bit differently. He has a profile up as well for the UDS, so go check those out. But realistically, do I think his deck's going to continuously top? I don't know. I, I don't think it's like the craziest thing in the world. I think like Pure Thunder may just be better, for example, but I don't know. We'll have to see what happens. I think his list is interesting, though, if that's for sure, and it's definitely something to test out. Lastly, we have David Flores with Thunder Dragons, not Danger Thunder Dragon, Pure Thunder Dragon. I think this was actually a really good decision. Gabe Vargas also played it, and I think, like, in general, Pure Thunder Dragon actually is a really good deck this format. It can play a ton of hand traps, obviously. David Flores played around, like, eight hand traps and then three Phantasme, so, like, technically 11 hand traps, but eight of them are heart, heart disruption. So, basically, I actually think Thunder Dragons was an amazing meta call. Danger Thunder Dragon has an incredibly hard time outing, like, Colossus and everything. Think about it. If you summon Levianir, that doesn't stop Colossus. If you stop something like... Realistically, you need Dengirsu, you need Unicorn, and you need something else. But then they just keep putting Colossus back on the field, and they can play Hand Traps to stop Danger Thunder from comboing out. So, that was, like, an amazing meta call. Like, what... Obviously, Orcus can out Thunderboards, and then they go into the grind game. But realistically, how does Danger Thunder beat Pure Thunder? If they if Pure Thunder goes first, most of the time they're winning. So that's basically my point here. So honestly, I think this was like a great meta call. The deck is still amazing. Nothing in the list got touched. So do I think Pure Thunder Dragon is the best deck? Honestly, I could see it, but. I don't know yet because the meta is still like undefined. I think there's going to be a difference in representation and a deck definitively being the best. Right now, I think Pure Thunder Dragon and Orcus are the decks that are going to be most represented going into Portland. And then we still have Danger Thunder Dragon being like the second most represented or whatever. So I think Pure Thunder Dragon is going to get a spike of representation after this event though. Like this is actually a really powerful deck. 
I would make sure you guys keep it on your radar. Orcus can beat Pure Thunder, and Pure Thunder can beat Orcus. So, like, it's a really interesting dynamic. Striker's still in the format. Not much has changed with that, except multi roll to one, which makes it less resilient to stuff. But, like, overall, Striker's still playable. This is going to be a great format. We still have a lot of decks. Salad is somewhat playable. So, in the end, this is going to be a pretty good format, it seems, except for most of it's the same as the last format, so uh, whoop de doo Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this video. I just kind of went in on the UDS, the techs, and the main decks going into Portland. Hopefully, you guys got some knowledge out of that. If you guys want to support me and buy any of the cards mentioned in this video, I wouldn't necessarily recommend buying Gizmic Orochi because it just spiked, but, uh, you know, if you want to buy any cards mentioned in this video, make sure to go down into the description and check out my TCG player affiliate link. It helps me immensely, so if you want to support me and buy cards at the same time, make sure to go down to TCG Player. And if you guys enjoy my content, make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to stay up to date with my latest videos. And with that, guys, I hope to see you soon.